Hi folks, welcome to Almond Park. We're right here in between Standale and Allendale, this beautiful natural area here. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna investigate in this virtual field trip, uh, some features of, uh, of streams here. Uh, now, if you take a look out this direction here, all right, way down there, say 80 feet or so down about, I don't know, it's pretty steep fall, right? Is our stream that we're looking at, right? It's not a big river, right? It's this fairly small stream. How did this little tall, small stream cut all the way down to there? Well, you know, it had a little bit of help from a couple different things. First of all, isostatic rebound. Remember in our first lab when we were playing with those floating blocks, right? We learned about isostasy, that, you know, uh, uh, relative buoyancy, right? Or relative density, right? Um, well, about 10,000 years ago, or about, say, 20,000 years ago, right on top of us, there would have been a mile deep worth of ice. You know, that's a huge amount of ice, a lot of weight, right? That weight added to the crust depresses it, kind of like pushing onto, you know, like a, a basketball or something, right? And then when all that ice melted back, guess what? We get what's called isostatic rebound, where the ground rebounds to its original, you know, neutrally buoyant position. Now... You know, it doesn't do it very fast, it does it over thousands of years. So uh, basically, the ground around the stream has been rising, right? And the stream's just cutting down like a bandsaw. Another factor here is base level, right? In the lecture, we talked about the base level of the stream being very important. It's the lowest point to which a stream can erode. Ultimate base level, the ultimate place where all water is trying to get to, of course, is the ocean, right? But we have a lot of local base levels too. This little stream here runs into the Grand River, right? So the local base level for this stream is the Grand River. The Grand River itself then runs into Lake Michigan. So Lake Michigan is an awesome local base level for a lot of our, our stuff around here, right? So as you think about it, in the past, lake levels have changed and fluctuated, and we're seeing that now, right? We have kind of, you know, very high lake levels, you know, going to the beach, there's hardly a beach at all anymore. Right? But throughout the history of the Great Lakes, they've gone up and down, right? And as they go up and down, the Grand River will change its, you know, its base level and adjust to that profile. And then this tributary will adjust to that one and so on and so on. All right. Let's move on to our next stop here, folks. All right, folks, now we've descended quite a bit closer down to our river, right? You can see our stream off in the background over there. Um, what we've done is we've come down a series of terraces. Come over here, I'll show you. Now a terrace, this is a former floodplain level, right? And as the ground rose up around these, uh, uh, around these rivers and streams, right? And as our lake levels change and these rivers cut down, they left these kind of abandoned old floodplain levels. And what we're walking on right now is one of these old abandoned floodplain levels. If we go right over to the edge here, we can see that these folks are actually walking down to the next terrace of the stream, right? Yeah. So as we go down, what we're going to do next is go down to the stream itself where the current stream is uh, and look at some features there. First, we'll stop by an oxbow. Okay. All right, folks. So here we are on that lower terrace now. If you look behind me, you'll see this big hill here that represents another level, an upper terrace, very nice flat part. But as we look across here, right, see how nice and flat this is. This is another terrace, right? We're almost down to the stream, okay? You can stop. All right, folks, I am now standing in an oxbow, an oxbow being an old abandoned meander bend in the river, right? So this is the path the stream used to take. And if you notice, there's some water sitting in it. So I guess right now it is an oxbow lake, right? Uh, it did just rain last night, so we have some water in here. There's uh, sometimes water, sometimes not in here, right? But you notice all these trees and stuff that are down over here. These are all, of course, carried in during flooding times, right? The most amount of uh, erosion and uh, transportation material always occurs during a flooding time, right? So this used to be a bend in the river, right? But the river created a new path, abandoned this, right? Our next stop is going to be the current stream. All right, we'll see you there. Whoa, 
Oh, Marty. <laughs> I'll lose my shoes if I go in on that. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, it's cold. Whoa, it's cold. <laughs> Hi, folks. Welcome to the stream, right? So now we are down at the current level that this stream is running, right? We passed through all those terraces, right? Now we've descended that 80 or so feet down that hill, and we're at the current level of the stream, right? It rained last night, so the stream is fairly full. But even if we've had a long dry spell, if you came to this park, you notice that there still is a stream running and there still is water flowing. Why is that? Well, it's because we live in a humid environment. We have lots of water here. Our streams in Michigan are what are known as gaining streams, which means they gain water from the ground. So even when it hasn't rained in a while and these streams are still flowing, that's because water is seeping in from the ground to the stream. The opposite happens in arid regions, right? Where it's very dry, whenever they get water, it gets sucked into the ground, kind of like a sponge, right? And that's called a losing stream. But here in Michigan, we have gaining streams. All right, let me get out of this water. We're gonna go take one more look at some more features of rivers. All righty, folks. Welcome to the last part of our little virtual field trip here. We are at a meander bend in the river, right? So this is where the, the river curves around. And as we discussed in the lecture, right, uh, different things happen in different parts of this curve, right? At the inside of the curve, right, the water is moving the slowest, and we get deposition occurring, as you can see here, where this tree is falling and blocking some stuff. We've got a bunch of sand being deposited, a little sandbar being, being uh, deposited here, right? Uh, but then on the outside of the bank, we have erosion occurring. This is, and you can kind of see from the water moving here, this is the fastest moving part of the stream, and it's where erosion is dominating. So this is the cut bank because it's being cut away. And actually, this is a really good demonstration here. These trees weren't in the river uh, or in the stream last time I was here. They were actually standing up on the bank, right? But during this spring, probably, when we had all those large rain events, and we had a bunch of water coming down here, remember, during flooding events, that's when the most erosion and the most transportation of materials occurs, right? So likely during this last, uh, uh, sometime during one of the last rain events, it ate away the bank on the outside enough to allow these trees to collapse into the stream, right? Now, of course, the trees are kind of blocking some stream movement as well. But uh, so basically this, you know, around the end, you see a very good example of this, this erosion on the outside, this cut bank, right? And then on the inside, deposition of a point ball, right? Sand and everything is being picked up, eroded from there, piled up into this side on the inside of those streams, right? And this tends to be deposition on the inside, erosion on the outside. It tends to meander, move these meander bends in the direction of their bend, right? So this one, we're bending this way. The outside is gonna to tend to eat its way that direction, right? All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed your virtual field trip to Almond Park. Thanks for watching. <laughs>